Good morning, everybody. This is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College, and we're looking at uh, July the 31st and 1 Corinthians and chapter 10. We have the second part of a passage in which Paul discusses idolatry. Idolatry was something that permeated the whole of the ancient world, and Paul has to address it at the church at Corinth. And he says this, Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. Pick up your bags and run as fast as you can away from all idolatry. He says, I speak to wise men. You judge what I say. The cup, which, the cup of blessing which we bless, is it not communion of the blood of Christ? And the bread which we break, is it not communion of the body of Christ? For we are many, yet there is just one bread and one body, and we are all partakers of the one bread. Now, <clears throat> he says, those that are Gentiles who go to the Gentile temples to offer meat to their idols are doing it to devils. The thing that's behind the temple is not God, but it is supernatural. And the thing that's behind the temple are devils, demons. And he says in verse 21, you cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. And you cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. And it, but he does go on to say, he says, whatever is sold in the meat market, eat it, asking no questions about its origin for conscience sake. That's your own conscience. Um, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. This meat in the meat market, it may have been offered to an idol notion, nominally, but it is not really defiled. It is just meat, just the same. However, Let's suppose you are invited into the home of a fellow believer. He says you sit down for your meat and you're about to eat it. And somebody at the table turns to you and says, oh, by the way, this has been offered to an idol. He says, don't eat it. Not because the meat's defiled, but because the person that mentions that obviously has a problem. They have a problem with the meat and the meat they think is tainted by idol worship. He says, if you sit down and you carry on eating, then the person that said that is going to be offended. They're going to be led astray by you because if they copy you, as they should copy you, people should be able to copy one another. If they copy you, they will think that they are defiling themselves with an idol. Of course, it is actually only just meat, but they will think that they have defiled themselves. And so Paul comes down to verse 32, and this is my password for today. He says, give none offence, neither to the Jews, or to the Gentiles, or to the Church of God. Now that's a, a fascinating passage. Paul is describing three types, three groups of humanity. There are in the world today three types or three groups of humanity. There are the Jews. These are all the people that are the natural descendants of Abraham. They may be saved or not, but that's not the point. They are Jews. And then there are the Gentiles. Now that word Gentile just means the nations. They're all the people that are not Jews. So you've got the Jews and the non-Jews. And then you've got another complete designation of people in the world. There are the Church of God. The Church of God is not Israel. Israel is not the Church of God. The Church of God is not the Gentiles. The Gentiles are not the Church of God. And certainly Gentiles are not Jews. And so we have these three specific designations of mankind. And we're all there somewhere. 
You might be a Jew and you're Christian. That's fine. You're part of the Church of God. You might be a Jew and you're not a Christian. That's good. That's, that's your position in the world. You might be a Gentile and not a Christian. That's your position in the world. But God has these three positions in the world. And may I say that the Church of God is not male or female or Jew or Gentile or slave or free. We are all one in Christ Jesus. What a wonderful truth that is. God bless you. It's great to talk to you and look forward to talking to you again tomorrow. Bye for now.